on the New Year's Eve night just because I wanted to see 2020 die. I saw a meme. I love memes. Mm -hmm. But uh, I saw this meme where it said, okay, nobody is allowed to claim 2021 as their year. Everyone needs to be quiet, be good, and don't touch anything. <laughs> hey, man, Lord's still on the throne, though, isn't he? Yeah. He's still in control. That's what we need to remember. No matter what's going on in this world, the Lord is always in control of things. Because we have faith and trust in him for all things. Praise the Lord for snow. Yeah. 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 You know, I, it was the day after uh, Christmas, and it was snowing, and I told my wife. I want a white Christmas. I just don't want a white January and February, but I don't think you can get one without the other. Let's go ahead and stand, please. The other folks are making their way in. We're going to sing a Glorious Day, a great song. Make sure you sing from your heart. Think about the words and smile as you sing. It's going to be a glorious day someday, amen? amen. When he comes again in the clouds and we meet him in the air and those that are dead before us, we meet them in the clouds. What a glorious, wonderful day that's going to be. Let's sing like it today. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is like the worst start we could possibly have all right so our instruments there's some other things that are going on as with everything when it comes to sound systems that's what you end up problem with my wife had surgery on her finger uh the last time we were in a fight she hit me in the side of the head it really hurt and uh so she had to have surgery on it. actually she had a uh a cyst and some other things going on there so she can't play the piano right now which is the reason we're going with this so we're going to go ahead and take another swing at it again how about that all right, let's go ahead and we're going to start completely over. Hey, Happy New Year. It's great to have you here today, Cross Point Baptist Church. Let's go ahead and sing Glorious Day.
second time around. Uh, it's great to have everybody here with us today. We're going to have a word of prayer, ask the Lord to watch over our service today. And I believe that no one is here by accident. I believe that God has you here for a purpose and a reason. And if we'll just simply open our hearts to the Holy Spirit, he'll speak to us regardless of who the speaker is, regardless of what songs are sung, he will speak to your heart about exactly what you need to get through this week. Uh, so let me encourage you to be praying for that. We have a number of folks that are sick or their family is sick, so let's keep them in our prayers. Uh, I know that uh, Shay's grandparents, are they doing okay, Shay? Okay. Uh, they both have COVID. A number of you I asked you to be praying for them. Uh, make sure we keep them in prayer. Uh, some folks ask me, well, my folks, they're back on the men. They're still kind of weak, but they're getting there. And so praise the Lord, most of the people get through this. And so we'll just keep, uh, keep committing that to prayer and trusting the Lord for these things. Let's bow to the Lord for word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for today. Lord, I do thank you for the blessing it is to serve such a great God. Lord, it's amazing to me, Lord, that you love us. Lord, when we fail so often times, Lord, and we don't do as we should. Lord, we know that you love us because your word tells us so, but Lord, also because we feel it in our hearts. Lord, I pray you be with those that are watching online today because of COVID or sickness. I pray that you keep them safe. Lord, bring them back to good health. Lord, I pray for those that are usually here in our congregation that aren't able to be here because of traveling. Lord, give them traveling mercies. Watch over them as well. Lord, be with our country, Lord. So much is going wrong, but Lord, there's so many things that are great about this nation. I pray that we focus upon that which draws us together. Father, I pray be with our president, be with our Congress. Lord, may they come to terms with some things. And Father, I do pray also you be with our soldiers, those that are in harm's way as well as those that are serving on military bases here in the United States and around the world. Keep them in your care. Watch over them. And Father, I pray that you protect their families as they're away from them. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity we have to meet today in your house. May we give you the praise, honor, glory that is due your name. In thy precious son's name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Let's remain standing. We're going to sing an old hymn, Trust and Obey. Let's sing this together.
doing children's church with pastor t for a little bit we had a song that was called obedience and this is what that reminds me of and it was it's a great song for kids the problem i have with it is you gotta sit down and stand up and i don't know if you can tell but i'm six foot six and sitting down and standing back up does not bode well if you gotta do it fast so it was this song is great i just kind of have those little flashbacks every now and again and my knees hurting uh, <laughs> our next song is good good fathers sing this song out and sing it proud
like we're on the struggle bus today. How about that? You ever been on the struggle bus? Yeah. Amen. Have the kids be dismissed. Go to Children's Church. Any kids that aren't back there yet, take your way back. Children's Church. The rest of us take our Bibles. We're going to do two passages of Scripture today. John chapter 14. If you don't mind John chapter 14. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to make any New Year's resolutions. I know it's kind of one thing in the old past, but I, I, I found some uh, children's kids' resolutions for the new year I thought you might find interesting. This kid, Joey, 10 years old, writes, My New Year's resolution is to not eat as much sugar, but I probably won't keep it. It's <laughs> a great way to start a year. My resolution is to stop biting my nails because my mom says she's going to make me wear nail polish that tastes like rotten eggs if I don't. Kate, age 8. Annie, age five, says, I'm going to help doggies like if they are stuck on cliffs. She must have saw some movie or something. Second grader writes this, in 2016, my resolution is not to wig out like I'm seeing the Loch Ness Monster when I see a bug. My, do my daughter, she hates spiders. I don't think of that. I'm going to stop picking my nose. It's going to be very hard. And my favorite one here, I will eat all the cake. Will, age four. That's a resolution I can get behind. I'll eat all the cake. Greater things. We're going to start a series. Uh, I was planning to start it next week, but I'll be honest with you. I want to get a, a jump on it. Um, and uh, it's going to be our theme for this year, 2021. Greater things. And uh, I believe that God has blessed Cross Point Baptist Church in a great way. He's blessed us with people. He's blessed us financially. He's blessed us with a church building. He's blessed us in so many different blessings. Uh, even this last year, 2021, to see where we are now is amazing. And it's because it's, the, the church is the Lord's, not ours. And so the Lord's building it. But John chapter 14 and verse number 12 is the verse that we're taking this from this year. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my father he says greater works than these shall he do and you realize that jesus christ is writing to his disciples john chapter 14 uh, is part of that passage where he's right before he's going uh, to the garden of gethsemane it's at the last supper that he's giving his last parting thoughts to them and they remember what the first part of john chapter 14 talks about very famous john chapter 14 let not your heart be troubled you believe in God, believe also in me. I go to prepare a place. Remember, ring a bell? Just nod your head, even if it doesn't. Just read, nod, look, look spiritual and just nod your head. Yes, Pastor. Yes, Pastor, I've got it. Well, verse number six, what does Jesus say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. How many times we've used that verse? I've used that verse in preaching and sharing the gospel message with people. But when we stop to realize Jesus isn't talking to unsaved people here. Jesus is talking to his disciples. He's talking to those that once again already believe in him. And here he says, greater works than these shall he do. Now you look at the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's pretty daunting. The miracles he did, the teachings that he did. But Jesus said, hey, you're excited about this. You're, you're excited about what's happened in my life. He said, but greater than this, greater works than these shall he do. The one that believes in Jesus Christ. And I'm going to challenge us this, this year, many times throughout the year, into walking by faith and not by sight. Greater things. I was talking to some of the men. You'll hear this uh, later in the, uh, in, the, in the month. But I believe far too many Christians and far too many churches settle for, sit, for um, staying on the east side of Jordan instead of crossing over into the promised land. We are content with the leftovers when we could be sitting at the king's table and dining. And I believe as a church, once again, the only thing that will stop us is a lack of faith. And I'm not going to talk about our church, any church. The only thing that will stop us and stymie us is when we begin to look with eyes to say, I'm only going to step when I see it, as compared to saying, no, Lord, I'm going to step even if I don't see it, because I know that you will always take care of your church. You'll always take care of me. And we have that kind of faith. It's amazing what the Lord can do. So today we're going to talk about trusting faith. Turn over now to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. And I'm not going to, many of you, if you've been saved for any amount of time, you've heard probably passages or read this or maybe it's your life verse even. 
But Proverbs chapter 3, uh, 5 and 6, we'll get to there in just a minute, Chris, stay right there. Of course, most of you know it, you can go ahead and say it with me. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. And those are, that's, that's a famous pastor scripture, we're going to preach on that today. We're going to look at this this morning. And I hope that once again we have our hearts open to saying, Lord, am I truly walking by faith as I should? Now, as we look at this passage, we have to understand that the first four verses of this, the Lord is telling us these things because he loves us. Now, I know that Solomon is being told this by King David, and Solomon then is passing this along to his son. When you read the book of Proverbs, that's what you have to understand. The majority of the book of Proverbs was written by Solomon. It was teaching that his father gave him, David gave him, and Solomon now is passing on to David's grandson. But ultimately, know that every word of God is a preserved word of God, Inerrant, infallible word of God. I believe I have the word of God in the English language today. And so I'm going to take God's word for it. That once again, the reason it's in there is because the Lord wants us to glean for it ourselves. The same principles that Solomon was telling his son are applicable to you and I today. All God's people said, amen. So verses one through four, what does he say? He says, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. The Lord is telling us this. He's saying, hey, if you'll, if you'll understand, this is what you want. This is how that happens. Now, I think all of us would say, verses 1 through 4, we want that in our lives, right? I want, the, I want to be able to have blessings. I want to be able to be, have favor in the sight of God and man. I want to have long days, but not just long and lengthy days, but happy days, joyful, love, joyfully living. And so he says, I don't, want you to, I don't want you to miss this. So I want you to understand this. I believe the Lord is telling us this because he desires good things for us. He desires good things for us. If one thing I could say in 2020 that disappointed me, I would have to say it's this idea. That too many Christians got caught up in the negativism of the world. It crept into our churches. It crept into our social media. It crept into our conversation. There are churches and people that are at each other over things that ought not to be. Making division where it shouldn't be. And we've forgotten to realize the fact, the fact that no matter what's happening in this world, God is still good to us. Amen? The Lord desires good things for you and for me. Now, are you saying, Pastor, you don't think we should ever disagree? We're going to disagree. But disagree with a smile on your face. How about that? Huh? I've, I've told people, I said, I could agree with you, but then we'd both be wrong. <laughs> uh, I could do that, but I don't want to be wrong. You can use that. You can, that's free. You can go ahead and take that and use it in your conversation. Just be ready for what happens next. But you know what? The Lord desires good things for Theron Crawford. He desires good things for Patrick or Paul, whatever he's going by in 2021. He desires for good things even for Sarah and for Caleb. He desires good things for all of us. And once again, sometimes in life it may not seem that way, but we have to remember and understand that I'm a child of God. I am in the palm of his hand, and nothing is ever going to happen to me that does not first pass through his hand. So I can be happy and have joy and have peace because I know that no matter what's happening, even if it's the worst case scenario, that God still desires for me to get through life with a smile on my face. He still desires to give me good things. We need to remember that. What do we also need to do? Let's take a look at verse number five here. Let's break this verse apart. We must trust the Lord. We must trust the Lord. Do you trust the Lord? I'm not saying do you believe him. Do you trust him? Now, trust sometimes can be different than just saying I believe that he is. Trust is something that's hard for us, isn't it? You ever think, why is trust so difficult? Because we've been burned. Huh? We're used to human failing. 
And unfortunately, we take that mentality and transfer it through to God. And not stopping to realize, wait a minute, he never fails us. So I should not have trust issues with him. But throughout scripture, we see over and over again that we're commanded to have faith, to increase our faith, and to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 5, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Take just that portion of it for right now. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. You see, if we're going to do this, it requires a walk of faith. It requires faith, not faith in your pastor. Amen. Huh? He's a faulty vessel. You're going to amen that. It's okay. Huh? He has the best of intentions. I'll promise you that. But he, is a, he, he messes things up. I am not the wealth of knowledge. There are many things about this life I don't understand. Don't have your faith and trust in pastor or another pastor if you're visiting from another church. Don't have your faith and trust in people, even God's people. Will they let us down? Yes. Now, hopefully, if we're the right kind of church, we don't do it on purpose. Huh? But we may let each other down. Our eyes need to be on the Lord. We need to have that trust in the Lord. And that requires great faith. Writer Tim Hansel told the story of one day when he was out with his young son, Zach. And they were climbing around on some cliffs. And he says, I turned around just as my son, Zach, said, hey, Dad, catch me. He said he turned around to see the smiling face of Zach jumping at him off the side of the cliff. And he kind of grabbed at him like this and held on to him. He was nervous. He grabs him and he looks at him. He goes, Zach, can you give me one good reason why you think this would be okay? And with remarkable calmness, Zach looked at him and said, sure, because you're my dad. I wonder, do we do have the same mentality to our Lord? Our Father in heaven. Jump! It's okay. You know, in, the, in, the, in Christian life, we're going to have to have faith. My life verse, Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 6, the verse my wife and I claimed when we came into the ministry. Well, that and being a millionaire. But we're going to focus on this one right now. <laughs> we should, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Impossible. We can't do it. I can't choose to have little faith or no faith and still call myself a good Christian. I must have a Christ, be the kind of Christian that says, Lord, I have faith. I have trust. But, Lord, increase that faith. Increase that trust. Every day, every week, every month, every year, let me be a stronger Christian in my faith than I was in the past. It requires faith. But also it requires a confidence. It requires confidence. Trust in the Lord with how much? Oh, oh man, that's the rub, isn't it? Huh? That's the rub. I trust my kids. I love my family. If you have not been here much, my family, I get the greatest family in the world. The most wonderful, beautiful, smart wife. I have great, smart, intelligent kids. They love their dad. And I love them. But you know, Sometimes we can lack confidence even among those that we love. Huh? My wife loves me most of the time. I hope that she likes me all the time. But there's some times that I'm not lovely. How about you? Huh? Go ahead and nudge your spouse. <laughs> wake him up, make sure he's listening to this part. Or her. One fellow, they said, do you wake up grumpy? She said, yeah, and sometimes I let him sleep. <laughs> We need to trust the Lord at all times with all of our heart. There cannot be an area of our life that we're saying, I'm not going to trust you, Lord. So what do you mean, Pastor? See, sometimes I'm willing to trust him with things. He says, Theron, I want you to be a blessing to this person. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm willing to do that. I'll give him 20 bucks. The Lord says, no, give him 200. You see what I'm saying? Lord, I'm willing to serve in anything you ask me to do. If the pastor comes and asks me, great. Pastor say, hey, could you straight up the chairs after church today? Sure, I'm willing to do that. Hey, could you be a teacher? Mm. 
You see, sometimes we're willing to give him a part, whatever is convenient for us, but the Lord says, I don't want to share with anybody. I want you to trust me with your whole heart. No matter what it is that I ask you to do, I want you to do it. Remember one of the hardest decisions I had is when we went to Nicaragua on a mission trip with our church and that I started in South Haven. As I talked to my wife a week before we went and asked her, I said, I think the Lord may be calling me to be a missionary in Nicaragua. Nicaragua was the second poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. When we lived there for a couple of years, we had 50% of the time, generally, electricity and water. Literally, all of a sudden, you'd just be in the middle of the evening, and the, the electricity would just shut off for a couple of days. I remember the first got there, I said, do you call anybody? They said, no. I said, well, shouldn't you call and let them know the electricity out? One kid looked at me kind of funny and goes, they know it. <laughs> all right what i found out is if they if we were up on the side of the mountain way up on the side of the mountain and if the if the electricity bill got too high they'd shut off everybody in the mountain so you'd see the entire side of the mountain go black i remember asking my wife i said are you are you willing to go i said will you pray with me about this and i'll never forget what she said she said if that's where the lord wants you to go then i'm going to that's the lord's will for us I thank God for a pastor's wife that's willing to be that way. Never one time did she complain about those things. But that was a hard question to ask her. Because I knew what I was asking her to give up. I'd been to Nicaragua. I understood it. I don't know what the Lord's going to ask you to do in 2021. But can I ask you, are you willing to do it? It may take sacrifice. It may take extra commitment. Can I even say this? Even Hollanders, you can unplug one ear. It may even require our money and our finances to be totally committed to him. And to open our checkbook and say, Lord, whatever it is you want me to give, I'll give it. All thine heart. All thine heart. But also requires a willingness, doesn't it? A willingness. Trust the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. Are we willing to do God's will once we know it? Hmm? Are we willing to do God's will once we know it? Or are you like maybe what your kids were? They keep coming back and asking the question after you said no because they want a different answer. Lord, I'm willing to. I'm willing to do whatever you ask me to do. Single guys that are in here, I'm going to give you some tips so you may want to write these down. Your wife, future wife, may not always mean what she says. When you're going to do something and you let her know and she gives you this kind of look and says, go ahead. That is a dare. <laughs> That's not telling you to go ahead. She looks at you and goes, go ahead. And the eyebrows go, don't go there. If she says fine, it doesn't really mean fine. That means I'm tired of talking to you. You're an idiot. Shut up. <laughs> Fine. I've had enough of this conversation. It's over. My wife doesn't do this, but maybe you know of somebody who does. Where would you like to eat? I don't care. That is not true. <laughs> men, can I get an amen on this? Come on, pull up your pants there and say amen. Huh? I don't care. Does she care? Yes, she does. See, the first three first years, I used to get real frustrated with this until I figured it out. Huh? See, what she wants is she wants multiple choice. That's what she's asking for. You know, what, would you, what do you want to eat? I don't care. Well, I feel like Burger King. Why? Because Burger King has the best sandwich ever made to mankind, the Whopper. The only thing that makes it better is bacon because bacon makes everything better. It was so great. That burger sandwich is so great, they make it in a travel size called a Whopper Junior. <laughs> you can tell my love of Burger King, can't you? Uh, so what's my go-to? Burger King. That's right, man, flame broiled burger, why not? No. Eh, that doesn't mean that either. That's a no. When they go, eh. Or it's dead silent. There's multiple choice. Just get this in your head. 
How about Subway? Mm. Arby's? Mm. About this time, what do I ask? Just tell me, what do you want to eat? You said you didn't care, right? Just tell me. I'm a guy. I'll eat whatever you put in front of me. Huh? I'm not a big Taco Bell fan, but I'll eat Taco Bell. I know it's authentic Mexican food, but I'll eat it. Huh? Sometimes, that's not what she said. I don't know where I was going with that. I just thought it was fun. No, it requires a willingness. When God tells you to do it, the Lord says, this is what I want you to do. You can't go, eh. Yeah, well, Lord, I'll go where you want me to go. Eh. Lord, whatever you ask me to give, my finances, my, my, my life, my house, my cars, everything is yours. Eh. If we're not careful, we fall into that trap. He says, I don't want part of your heart. I want all your heart. When you say and pray and say, Lord, I'll give what you want me to give, be willing to follow through with that. Number two, we must not lean unto our own understanding. We must not lean unto our own understanding. Verse number five, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. We are directed away from our security, our comfort, right? We're directed away from our comfort. You see, I have no problem stepping out in faith and trusting the Lord as long as it's something I'm already willing to do. When little kids get a handful of jelly beans, what's the one that they offer to you? The black one. Why? Because it tastes like tar. Only crazy people like it. They put it in as a gag one to go ahead and make you spit. How many of you like the black jelly beans? Yeah, older people. I knew it. Huh? You guys are all sick people. I'm surprised there were that many people. Huh? They give you the black one. Why? Because they don't like it. Sometimes we're not careful. That's what we do to the Lord. Once again, the Lord says, no, I want all the reds, reds and the greens. Eh. Right? The Lord directs us sometimes away from our security. If I'm going to say, Lord, I'll do in 2021 whatever you ask me to do. Lord, as a church member, as a husband, as a father, as, as just an individual in your service, Lord, whatever it is that you ask me to do, whatever you ask me to give, wherever you ask me to go, I'll do it. Lean not into thine own understanding. So what's he saying? We've got to take self out of the picture, don't we? We've got to take our own will, our own desires, our own comfort zone out of the way we have to remember that we understand very little we understand very little see what do you mean sometimes we say lord well i'll give that but i just don't see how that's going to work out wait a minute the lord doesn't promise us that he'll show us how it's going to work out he just says trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding there was a famous general who was studying at West, at West Point. He was given a responsibility for a paper to talk about Einstein's theory of relativity. And he writes this, as the general writes this, he goes, the text was complex and I was unable to comprehend it, i.e. he was not Einstein. But I committed all the pages to memory. And when I was called upon to recite it, I reeled off almost word for word exactly what was in the book. Our instructor, Colonel Feiberger, looked at me somewhat quizzically and asked, do you understand this theory? It was a bad moment. But I didn't hesitate. I stood at attention and said, no, sir. He said, you could have heard a pin drop. He said, I braced myself for I knew what I knew was coming. The professor looked over at him and said, neither do I, Mr. Douglas MacArthur. Section dismissed. Huh? MacArthur was making the point, I don't, I don't understand everything. As a soldier, he was, he was writing to, he said, you're not going to understand everything, but you just need to do your best. There's so much about this life that we don't know. History, direction, outcome. And we can't say, Lord, I'm willing to follow you as long as I comprehend it. Because we won't always comprehend the things of God. And we will not see the things as he sees them. Aren't you glad that the Lord is smarter than you? Now think about it. Huh? Aren't you glad the Lord is smarter than you and I? I'm glad the Lord is smarter. See, why? You need to be afraid if the Lord, if I understand everything about God. 
Because that would mean that I understand everything that God knows, and that's impossible. His ways, his thoughts are so far above ours. And sometimes when we can't see why he's moving a certain way, while he's adjusting a, a situation, why he's planning things a certain way in your heart and your life, you can't see what it's going to mean six months or six years down the road. But trust him. Trust him with all your heart. Number three, we must fill, we must in all our ways acknowledge him. Verse number six, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Can I ask us a simple question this morning? Is he really, truly, please look at me for a second. Just everybody look up here for a second. Is he truly in control of every area of your life and mine? Every area. Young parents try to raise their children according to the book. You know, they get some book, some Ph.D. guy, generally that doesn't have children of their own, that's going to write and tell you how to go ahead and take care of your children, discipline your children. You know, it's okay even in 2021 for a child to learn the meaning of the word no. It's okay. And you know what? They may not like it. Huh? It's okay, young parents, for you to tell your child no. It's okay. Grandchildren, eh, but children. No, my grandkids, I do tell them no once in a while. Can I climb up on the roof and jump off? I say no, you can't do that. But is he truly in control of every area of your life? This week, I challenge you, this week, write them down, all the different areas of your life, your finances, your personal walk, your marriage, your family, your work. Start writing them down and say, Lord, are you in complete control in this area of my life? In all thy ways, acknowledge. What that's saying is this. In every way and every path that we take, Lord, you're first. Lord, you have complete control in every area of my life. Is he truly first place? Turn over to Colossians chapter 1, please. Colossians chapter 1. Is he first place? Does he have top priority? A group of friends went deer hunting and paired off in twos for the day. And that night, one of the deer hunters returned back alone, staggering under the weight of an eight-point buck. His friends looked around and said, hey, where's Harry? The fellow looked at him and said, well, Harry had a stroke of some kind a couple miles back up the trail. Friends were incredulous and said, you left Harry lying there and carried the deer back? He said, well, I figured nobody was going to steal Harry. <laughs> huh? Are you first place? Is the Lord first place? Or are you first place? You know, I'm all about family. Those who have come here for a long time, I'm all about family. Family comes first. I've told every church I've ever pastored, I will be the best pastor I can be for you, but my family comes before the church. You say, why? Not before the Lord, before the church. Difference. See, I can get another church, I can't get another wife. Not one that will put up with me with this many years. I can get another church, but I can't get another any more of my children. I don't want to look back with regret. But can I share you with something? The Lord never asked you to give up what's important to the Lord for what you want. You say, what do you mean? Having said that, I've never had to sacrifice my family for a church. You say, why? Got to have priorities right. You see, church was always a priority with my family. Always. No matter what else was going on, we were going to go to church. We were on vacation. My mother was a... Uh, Native American, raised on a reservation in New Mexico. We go visit them. I love my, my uh, father-in-law, my mom. They didn't go to church at all. Every Sunday morning, we'd get up and get dressed. They'd be out drinking their coffee. All the kids would get all dressed up, and we went to church. You say, why? I don't care what anybody else thinks. I care what they see. The consistency in saying our Lord comes first no matter what the case. Colossians chapter 1, verse number 16. The Bible says this, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. For by him were all things created, 
that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him, and look at this next part, and for him. And he is before all things. Think about that. He is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have what? The preeminence. In everything, he says, I want to be first place. The Lord is not content for us to set him side by side with anything else. I love my wife. I think she likes me. But the Lord is first. I love my children. I adore my grandchildren. But the Lord comes first. I love you. I tell you every week, I love being your pastor. Nothing else in this world I'd rather be able to do than be the pastor of Cross Point Baptist Church. But I love the Lord more. I try to. Everything God has given to me, cars, house, money, but we have to love the Lord first. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. And then what happens? Number four, I'll close. We must allow him to direct our path. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy paths. You know, the Lord promises us direction in this life. He promises us direction. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 5. The Bible says this, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, go to the next verse there, the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, we're talking about direction here, if any of you lack what direction you need to go, let him ask of God, which giveth to all men liberally. You know what that means? It means God is eager to give you direction. He wants us to come to him for direction and ask him. And he says, I'll give you that direction. He shall direct thy path. And upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. A man was on a flight across America in 1976. He rose up from the seat, the plane he was in, drew a gun, and took the stewardess hostage. He said, take me to Detroit. She was afraid and frightened, but she says, we're already on the flight that goes to Detroit. He said, oh, good, and he sat back down. <laughs> you know, if we're letting the Lord direct our paths, we're going to ask him for direction, but many times we already know where he's going. We just need to follow him. Be willing to let him be in control. Why? Because he's capable in any situation. The Lord is not going to lead us to do something that he's going to leave us there. Now, it may seem sometimes very lonely, but he says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Let him give us direction. Two thoughts today, and I'm, I'm finished. Am I willing to follow the Lord? I want you to think about this today. Am I willing to follow the Lord? Am I willing to? And then number two, am I truly allowing the Lord to lead? Hmm? Am I truly allowing the Lord to lead me? It's amazing to me that the times in my life when I've taken the steering wheel out of God's hands, things always go badly. I'm not talking about I fall off the wagon and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mess. I'm talking about when I say, Lord, I'm going to tweak the direction we're going here just a little bit. When I do, I get away from what God's plan is for me, and things begin to get off the rails. It's not until I take my hands off the steering wheel and say, Lord, direct me. I'll do whatever you ask me to do. Go wherever you want me to go. I'm willing to go. I am pastoring here today because God led me to Nicaragua. I love the church that I pastored in South End. I love the city of South End was there for 13 years love the folks that were there my kids will tell you that's what they firmly believe 
that the reason that God took me to Nicaragua is to get me out of South Haven because I'd never come out of South Haven if I wouldn't have gone to Nicaragua. And I would have stayed in Nicaragua if God hadn't have broken my back. And so I end up here. This is the first church I can honestly say that I have friends in this church. I have people that I know care about me and love me and would do anything for me. There's no other place I'd rather be pastoring in 2021 than Cross Point Baptist Church. I am heart, soul, body here. I love this town. God has given me a burden for the city of Wyoming. I believe God is going to do greater things this year in 2021. But God had to do a number of things to get me to this point. Sometimes God has to take some things away and move us in places that we, want, we really don't want to go. But he says, trust me. I know what's best for you. Trust the Lord today. Let him completely lead and be willing to follow whatever he leads you to do. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for your goodness. The blessing, Lord, of being able to be in your house with your people. Your heads bowed and your eyes closed. I want to ask us just a couple quick questions today. And we'll be dismissed. I wonder how many Christians today would say, Pastor, there's some areas in my life that I struggle with giving God complete control over. I struggle with tithing. I struggle with attendance. I struggle with faithfulness. I struggle with giving out the gospel. I struggle in these areas. Pastor, this message this morning spoke to my heart. I have some areas that I need to give over to the Lord. Would you let me pray for you? Would you slip your hand up and let me pray for you today? Amen. Many hands. Amen. I'll pray for you in just a minute. Be willing to trust him. How many would say, Pastor, God's already shown me what I need to do. I just need to have the courage to step out and to do it. I know what I need to do. Pastor, pray for me in that area. Would you slip your hand up and let me pray for you? Amen. You may put your hands down. One final question today. Do you know Jesus Christ is your Savior? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart begins with understanding that you are a sinner, understanding that our sin condemns us to a place called hell, and that Jesus Christ came to this earth, died on the cross for our sins. The verse I quoted earlier, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I wonder today, do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? Are you truly a Christian? I wonder how many today would say, Pastor Crawford, I'm not certain that I'm a Christian. I don't know if I were to die today that I would go to heaven. I'm not certain about that. I'll not embarrass you in any way, I promise you that, but I would long to pray for you. Would you slip your hand up and let me pray for you? I'm not sure that I'm a Christian, Pastor. Pray for me. You slip your hand up and slip it back down, and I'll pray for you. If you're here in this room or you're at home watching online you can receive Jesus Christ as your Savior today by wholeheartedly understanding the price that was paid for your sin and receiving Christ as your Savior praying a simple prayer like this dear Lord Jesus I know that I'm a sinner I don't deserve heaven I know I deserve hell as payment for my sin but I know you came and died for me and rose again for my salvation. And I ask you now to come into my heart, take away my sin, and take me to heaven when I die. I'm trusting in you and you alone for my salvation. If you prayed that prayer this morning and you received Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want you to see me before you leave, and I want to have a word of prayer with you and encourage you. If you're watching online, write me a text note or an email and just let me know, hey, I prayed that prayer and received Christ as my Savior. We'll get back in contact with you and try to encourage you to grow in the Lord. Heavenly Father, be with these who've raised their hand, Lord, that have been praying and committing their ways to you. Lord, I pray that you give them the courage they need to do it. It's not always easy, Lord. It can be difficult, but Lord, you know what is best. May we commit our faith and trust completely to you. May we not allow human intellect to get in the way. But 
Father, may we be committed to the path that you have chosen for us. Those that may not be know for certain that they're on their way to heaven, those that may have heard but yet are still fighting against your Holy Spirit, Lord, I pray that they would commit their life completely to you. And Lord, they would receive you as Savior. In thy precious Son's name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Have the kids come back in. I want to mention this to you, especially this new year. We do have invitations. Basically, I've been stretching out our invitation time a little bit longer. Because of COVID, we're not trying to get everybody to come up and kind of pray up here. Um, generally, we will have uh, continue to have um, invitations. Uh, but for right now, with the uh, pandemic going on, we felt it's best people to stay in their seat where they're at. All right. Uh, I'll take the offering at this time. And uh, that's your cue to go ahead and get out your tithe. And uh, if you're watching online, a church member here, uh, some regular attender here, let me encourage you to go ahead and put it in the mail, put your tithe in there. The bills don't stop just because everything else shuts down. So I encourage you to make sure you send it in, or you can go online. That's those here as well. You can go online to crosspointbc.com, and uh, that is our church's website. Halfway down there, you'll see an area where you can give. That's a secure giving uh, app there that you can click on that. It doesn't go anywhere else. We don't see it. It just goes directly to the bank from your account. Uh, I'd encourage you to utilize that as well. If you're forgetful, that's a great way to do it as well. Set it up as a recurring thing. You just automatically, every week, your tithe goes in and goes to the Lord. So you give as the Lord directs you. Brother Scott, would you lead us in a word of prayer, please? Amen. A number of things we'll look at here for our uh, announcements coming up uh, next week. Brother Steve, we are going to do communion next week, just so you know that. And uh, we are going to collect our faith promise cards. How many of you turned in your faith promise card already? Okay, about a third of you. That's about what I thought. Okay, faith promise is once again how we give through giving to missions, uh, to spread the word of God to places like Asia and Africa and Central America, South America, through our missions program. And there's some cards back there on the table. I encourage you to grab one. We'll give you one next week. That is going to be the official day. We're going to kind of shut things down. It's been crazy with Christmas and, and uh, COVID and everything else. We haven't had that cohesiveness with this that I would like. But if you've not gotten involved with our Faith Promise program, I would encourage you to grab a card. You feel free to talk to me about it as well. I'll explain it in further detail for you. But next week, we will be doing that, collecting them together and getting an amount together. Of, in fact, how much has been given or committed rather to it. Um, Red Cross Blood Drive. I need one more person. It can be a lady. It can be a man. doesn't matter. Somebody that can come and help us with the Red Cross Blood Drive. We do this every other month. And if you could help commit like every other month, it takes like four or five hours for you to come. And basically, you just sit and just check people in is all you do. Uh, but we need somebody to come and help us. with. Actually, a couple more people would be great. Uh, if you can help me with that, that would be awesome. Uh, it happens on a Friday. It usually goes from like 11 o'clock, 10.30, 11 o'clock to about 4 or 5 o'clock depending on how many people they have come in. One of the reasons we do this is that we get an opportunity to be a witness to the people that are here as far as that are doing the blood draw and whatever else. But so I like to be able to open up our building for something that in our community people need, but also it gets people that wouldn't come into our church any other way, but they'll come in for that. And so it gives them an opportunity to come in, see the church, see what's going on here, grab some information, which we've had people grabbing information off our table. And so it gives us an opportunity, once again, to get into some of other people's homes and into their lives and let them know what's going on here at Cross Point. And ultimately, how they can come to the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. That's ultimately what we're shooting for here. 16th, we're going to have wall builders. We were going to have it earlier, but we've kicked it out for an extra week here. There's some other things that are taking place. Uh, so we're unable to do it on, the, on uh, the 9th, but we'll do it on the 16th. That's for all of our men. If you're a man, you'd like to come to the Bible study, I encourage you to come to, to be a part of that. And uh, we've shut down all of our outreach ministries simply because we can't go to the nursing homes, can't go to Mel Trotter, can't go to the VA home, the number of things we always do. I want you to understand by this, I'm going to put this on there, it's also on your bulletin. Uh, I am still going into the Sunset Nursing Home, uh, the, the Sunset Manor over there off Bailey. Uh, they've asked me every month to preach a message, so I do that, record it, and we take, well, actually we took our, our church service a couple weeks ago and brought it into them and they watch it on their closed caption thing that they've got there in their in their home 
And uh, that one is a big one. The sunset is probably the biggest one I think I've seen around here. Uh, but I want you to pray for that because I always give the plan of salvation. Okay, I always go ahead and talk about the Lord. And when you preach a Bible message, something I think will encourage them. And so be praying that the Lord will, number one, allow people to be saved through that. Uh, but also, number two, that they'll be able to see that somebody in the community actually cares for them. Those buildings are shut off from everybody, including family. Uh, they can't go in there. So it's really a, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to get the gospel message in. And so pray for me as I do that each time. And then the end of this month, we'll be having our One Vision Sunday. Usually we have a, a whole meal and cater it in and everything else. Once again, because of COVID, we're not going to be doing that. But I do want you to know we are going to be having it on the 31st here in our morning service. I'll explain a number of different things, uh, goals from last year, goals from this year. It'll be a little more scaled down uh, just simply because we don't know how things are going to shake out moving forward. Uh, but I believe that a man who shoots at nothing will hit it every time. So not having a goal is senseless. Uh, so failure to plan is planning to fail. So I give you a number of different quotes from that. But uh, I really want you to plan to be here, be praying how the Lord is going to use you in this church in 2021. Now we're going to be reorganizing things this, uh, this month, and so you'll get a kind of a glimpse of that. And I'll be asking you to get involved in your church. Radical concept, I know. But uh, let's go ahead and stand. We're going to have a word of prayer. I want to tell you thank you very much for being here today. As I've done every week, I'm not going to go back in the back and shake hands. If you're visiting with us today, thank you so much for being here. If you did not get a visitor's card, you can go to the back table there, and there'll be a visitor card and a gift, and a hundred-dollar gift card as well. No, that, that that's not that part's not true. But uh, the, you have a gift back there for you. Thank you for being here with us today. As I mentioned to you before, there's no place I'd rather be than being the pastor of Cross Point Baptist Church. Greater things, greater things are coming. Amen. No, we can do better than that. Greater things are coming. <laughs> say, say, what if Jesus comes again? Well, that's the greatest thing that we could ask for. So, amen. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer, and we'll be dismissed. Brother Jamie, would you please turn and lead us in a word of prayer as we close this morning? Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. We'll see you Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, for our Bible study. I encourage you to come back this coming Wednesday. Uh, the emergency exit is, o is open over here. If you'd like to slip out that way, feel free to do that as well. God bless.